This is a 2020 Mercedes-Benz A220 and today I'm going to go ahead and give you a walk around, show you some of its features and take it for a drive. Starting up here at the front of the vehicle, we've got a very large Mercedes-Benz badge. Now this uh, unit is all plastic and housed underneath here are the radar that are used for the radar cruise control, which this vehicle is equipped with. You can also see there's a parking front parking camera right here and parking sensors. Um, overall, I think the front grill looks pretty good, uh, nothing too atrocious, and uh, it's a very tidy look, especially for the uh, non-AMG package equipped model. The design of this vehicle is really very good. There's a lot of interior space, and that's partly due to the fact that Mercedes-Benz makes use of the entire vehicle. As you can see, the wheelbase is a decent size, but the front and rear overhang are very short. So just generally, the proportions of this car are very conducive to a spacious interior. The A220 has a very taut and tight rear end. Um, the exhaust tips also are, well, about as real as you'll get on any new car these days but the exhaust does come through the hole and we do have a nice chrome uh, dual exit exhaust. The combination daytime running light and turn signal indicator are also uh, very bright, very easy to see. And I like how the light bar comes all the way down and hooks around like this. Um, makes it very easy to, for other drivers to see and also gives the car a nice modern look. We've also got standard LED taillights on this vehicle. Um, very bright, nothing too fancy going on, no fun animations for the turn signal or anything like that. Exterior build quality on this car is generally uh, very good. Panel gaps all around the hood are quite even, as well as along the doors, the three door jams all uh, matching very well. Uh, coming around to the trunk, we've got a good agreement on both sides of the trunk as well. I would also like to note that on this A220, finished in uh, denim blue metallic, the quality of the paint is outstanding, um, unlike anything I've seen on a car at this price. I'd also like to point out an interesting exterior quirk of the vehicle, which is the size of the fuel door. I think it's comically large for a vehicle of this uh, size. The tires on this vehicle are a 205.55 on a 17-inch rim. And I personally would recommend sticking with these base 17 inch rims. They look uh, perfectly fine to my eye and uh, the ride quality on this car, I think would be hurt by a larger rim. Now let's go ahead and take a look under the hood of this A-Class. Um, this is just about the only thing on this car that isn't all new for uh, the 2019 introduction to the US market on this car. Um, here we have the two turbocharged two liter four cylinder. Now this example is um, an older design and a low output. So it's uh, 188 horsepower and 221 pound feet of torque. Now a particularly interesting uh, feature on this engine is that they've opted to mount the turbocharger on the front of the engine, which leaves um, the exhaust right here where you would might touch it if, uh, if you open the hood. And they've got a little warning label here that says hot but I think this is um, a little bit dangerous to have the hot turbocharger right here. Now the underside of the hood of this vehicle is riddled with these holes and indentations. I'm not sure if this is a cost saving or weight saving measure, but um, it is noticeable and there's no uh, protected uh, heat, heat shielding material or insulation on the top of the hood. Let's take a look inside the trunk. And I think it's pretty miraculous how much space uh, Mercedes has been able to squeeze out of this vehicle. I think the trunk is a very decent size, as is the interior. Now let's go ahead and talk about the interior of this vehicle, and I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. Now the A-Class is a fine looking car from the exterior. But where I think it really shines, and especially in this segment, is the interior. Um, the overall quality, layout, and technology in this interior is unlike anything you will find in any other car um, at this price point. I mean, this car starts at under $33,000, and uh, considering the feature set that uh, is available to you, um, I think that is an extraordinary value. Um, 
the star of the show here is the MBUX uh, infotainment system. This system actually debuted on the A class um, last year when it was first introduced. And this is interesting. This is a little bit different than what most automakers usually do when they introduce a new technology or um, uh, infotainment system is that normally it's going to be introduced on the most high end model and then the next redesign or the next couple of years later, it'll find its way into the lower uh, model. Now, Mercedes actually introduced the MBUX on the uh, A-Class, which is an interesting move. And for buyers of this vehicle, it's just a, a fantastic system. Um, I think this is the best in the business and certainly uh, the best in this class. Uh, we've got two very large high resolution displays. This one is, uh, just for the gauges, and this one is also a touchscreen um, and controls a lot of the other vehicle functions. The steering wheel on this vehicle um, is very comfortable and it also has um, a lot of buttons on here. The left side uh, controls up here are for controlling the left upper screen and the right side are uh, for controlling the right screen. It can get a little bit confusing um, which one controls what, but uh, I think I think anybody can get the hang of it after a few minutes. This car also is equipped with the advanced uh, driver assistance package, so you can see the Distronic uh, features here on the left. We've got uh, distance pacing, cruise control, as well as a uh, lane keeping assist and uh, uh, lane change assist as well. Um, now coming over to the center console, we've got three climate vents. This is a very cool look, almost looks like a turbine engine or something. These are uh, effective and very stylish. Um, and then coming down here, we've got this uh, switch area, which looks, I mean, it's its obviously not the same as other more high-end Mercedes-Benz models, but it is a very high quality switchware and overall really nice to the touch. Down in here, we have a wireless charging mat for your phone, which is great. And then uh, this is where you can connect to the vehicle for Apple CarPlay. This is a USB Type-C connector, and they're all throughout the vehicle. Um, that's, uh, in my testing, I did not find any uh, USB Type-A connectors, so you better have the new cords. Um, cup holder here is uh, pretty good. We've got uh, fold-out pieces so that you can uh, put a different size drink in here. And then this is the main control for the um, upper infotainment screen, although it is also a touch screen. So this is kind of a mouse type thing. You move your finger around and click it by selecting. We've also got the dynamic driving select here, so you can choose your different drive modes, um, as well as a volume knob, which is a little bit hard to see. If you're in the driver's seat, you might not be able to read what that says, which is, which is that it is the volume knob. Um, then something that is a little bit different on this uh, new infotainment system compared to the previous generation is um, instead of the mouse pad being up on also the wrist rest, the wrist rest is now a dedicated wrist rest, which this one is wrapped in uh, leatherette. And inside the center console, it is pretty small, but we do have two more uh, USB Type-C connectors in here. In standard Mercedes-Benz fashion, the seat controls are on the door. Um, this car is equipped with heated seats, but you can see a blank button next to it where the cooled seat option would be. The trim on these doors, I think, is especially nice. It's all aluminum, and it's got these nice uh, lines that travel all the way around the cabin. Overall, I think it's a very um, upscale look and helps uh, to keep the doors uh, looking more luxurious. In uh, my opinion, one of the things that helps to make a door look luxurious is the layering of the trims. So up at the top, the black uh, plastic, then followed by aluminum, then followed by leatherette. Then we have a nice uh, interjection of more uh, aluminum looking trim on the handle. So overall, this uh, really gives it a very high quality look and feel as well as keeps the car looking modern. Now, if you crank up the interior accent lighting all the way, um, it really accentuates this line of the dashboard where the uh, trim falls in and kind of tucks under this um, 
leatherette piece here, which I think is a great look. Um, and an amazing uh, extension of this LED lighting is that it is actually inside of every single climate control vent around the edges. This gives it a very luxurious look. Stepping into the uh, rear seat of the A-Class. Now this is clearly a compact car, but um, I think it is actually ample room for full-size adults, such as myself. Um, I'm six foot one, and I have the front seat here in the same position that I was using it in, and I am able to sit here reasonably comfortably. I have uh, sufficient knee room and headroom, which is uh, which is important for a car like this. Now, coming into the uh, center console here, uh, we do have two uh, pop-out cup holders. I always like to see this um, as a feature in a car. And something that also is uh, interesting, a lot of times you'll see the rear pass-through um, kind of happens behind the center console, but that's not the case in this car. The, the, actually, the whole middle seat acts as a pass-through. So if you want to get uh, skis or anything like that in the back of this car, this is how you're going to do it. Um, now, the two most notable things I think that you will notice about driving the A-Class are um, number one, the turning radius. The turning radius is a very tight, which I will now demonstrate. Um, when this really helps uh, maneuverability of the vehicle and I think uh, helps contribute to it being a really excellent city vehicle. Um, now the other thing that you're going to notice is um, transmission whine and transmission noise. And this is, I would say, the only uh, weakness of the, I mean, apart apart from, I mean, it's not a very fast car, but I mean, that's not to be expected. But uh, as far as the powertrain goes, the refinement on the uh, noise of the transmission, it is rather noisy. So uh, that's probably the most intrusive um, sound in the interior while driving. But um, in most driving scenarios, it's, it's totally fine. But when I notice it the most is when uh, you're driving the vehicle um, and you're using the engine to des decelerate. So when there's basically a negative uh, torque on the transmission, that tends to cause it to make the most noise. Because this transmission is a dual clutch, there are some occasions um, at low speeds when it tends to um, creep in a slightly jerking fashion, but it is very, very minimal, not at all like um, old, older um, low-end DCT cars, um, very, very refined in this car. Um, Mercedes has made a lot of, lot of progress on the um, uh, tuning of the transmission for this car. Um, let's go ahead and uh, put it into the sport driving mode here, see what that does for our uh, transmission response. So, an immediate downshift. I mean, the acceleration is actually pretty strong and uh, perfect. I mean, it's definitely su sufficient for all kinds of um, daily driving and city driving scenarios. Apart from the occasional um, intrusive transmission noise, the interior on this car is very quiet. Um, I think the um, generally the amount of road noise is very low and um, wind noise is a little bit uh, a little bit high but it's actually fairly fairly well insulated. This car has a smooth ride and a very good um, just very comfortable driving experience overall so I think they've done a fantastic job with just the uh, refinement of the uh, driving experience. Now I'm merging onto the highway now and something I'd like to test out is um, the lane keeping assist um, and radar cruise on this vehicle. Um, in other Mercedes-Benz products, um, it is very good, and I am curious to see if the A-Class can uh, uh, is as easy to activate and use as the other models. So let's go ahead and try it right now. Turn it on with one button. I'm going to set my speed. driving following distance and we should be good to go so I'm not sure how long this one is going to let me go 
without my hands on the wheel. But um, seems to be doing a fine job not swerving or anything, keeping me in the lane and managing the distance to the car in front of me. Another great feature of the A-Class is it does have an automated uh, parallel parking feature, which I will now uh, try to use. Let's go ahead and uh, activate the uh, cameras here and drive past the uh, space. And if you just pull up in front of it like so, it should find the spot. It's indicated it found. Press confirm to park. Yes, please. Engaging the reverse gear. It's now turned on the turn signal and it is parking itself. Now for a city car, I mean, this is a, this is a great feature and I think it's able to get into some very tight spaces. So if, especially if you're a little bit less comfortable uh, with the parallel parking, uh, Mercedes has got a really good system. And let's go ahead and look outside and see how uh, good a job this system did. Now it looks like it got very close, about three inches from the curb in the back and about two inches in the front. I have now asked it to exit the space. So it looks like there's no oncoming or traffic coming from behind. So the vehicle is now pulling us out onto the road. This is pretty, pretty cool. I think it's doing probably one more turn than it needed to, but better to be safe than sorry, all right? Pretty cool. And it pulls, pulls, me, pulls me right out onto the street. Pretty fantastic. Overall, I think the A-Class is a fantastic compact car. Um, easily the best in the segment in terms of comfort and uh, quality, this, this car it has a general luxury that is never seen at this price point or at this size. And I think if you don't need the extra size of some of the higher end uh, Mercedes models, that this might just be the best value in the lineup.